Welcome everyone to the Double Phoenix Alchemy and Metallurgy channel. Lila, as she prefers to be called, has spent over seven years studying and experimenting with Spagyric Alchemy so that she could provide you with this very important information. Today we're going to take a deep dive into the subject of alchemical mercury. Have you ever pondered the enigmatic essence of alchemical mercury? This mystical substance, shrouded in riddles and metaphors, has been a subject of fascination for centuries. Alchemical mercury, contrary to the elemental mercury we know from the periodic table, is a concept rather than a singular substance. It's a term that alchemists use to describe an elusive ingredient, an essential component in the transformation of metals, particularly in the quest to turn base metals into gold. The alchemists of old left us with a three-part riddle to decipher the identity of this enigmatic substance. The first clue, a stinking slimy water. An unappealing description indeed, yet it points to the raw, unrefined state of the substance, much like the base metals it's meant to transform. The second part of the riddle, a water that does not wet the hands. This suggests a substance that, while appearing liquid, behaves in a way contrary to common fluids. It's a paradox, a substance that is, yet isn't, that appears one way, yet acts another. The final clue, a substance found commonly everywhere. This element of the riddle leads us to consider substances that are overlooked because of their ubiquity. It's a reminder that sometimes the most ordinary things can hold extraordinary secrets. Alchemical mercury is not just a material substance, it's a philosophical concept, a spiritual essence. It is the catalyst, the transformative agent that stirs the metallic microbes into action, initiating the processes of putrefaction and fermentation. Without alchemical mercury, the alchemists believed, no transformation could occur. In essence, alchemical mercury is the key to the alchemical process. A secretive substance of the alchemist all throughout history. That the alchemist claimed their work could not be carried out properly without the knowledge of this substance and its use. In alchemy, mercury is a code word for waters. It is easy to see why it was named mercury when you look at the reflection of water that floats at the top of a glass always looks exactly like mercury metal floating, which is reminiscent of the famous alchemy saying, as above same below. Also named so because mercury metal is one of the few metals that has a liquid consistency and flows like water. When the alchemists talk about mercury, the metal they usually refer to it as vulgar or common mercury. It is easy to confuse the code word for alchemical mercury with vulgar mercury, but let's be clear that alchemical mercury contains absolutely no metal whatsoever. There are many versions of alchemical mercury and what they usually have in common is they are all a transparent water-like liquid, or some can come in the form of a salt-like substance. The alchemists gave us a three-clue riddle which we will use to decipher its identities here. Here are the three clues for what alchemical mercury is. Clue number one, a stinking slimy water, Clue number two, a water that does not wet the hands. And clue number three, a substance found commonly everywhere. Now let's look at the answers to these clues that Lila herself have deciphered for you. Clue number one, a stinking slimy water. The answer to this first clue is ammonium sulfate, which containing ammonia when in the liquid state is a foul-smelling substance that has an almost urine-like odor, as it can also be derived from urea found in urine, but is not urea itself. Ammonium sulfate is alkaline or basic because of the ammonia, and is anionic because of the sulfates. This is the best alchemical mercury and most common secret of the alchemist. Adding this in alchemical recipes will supply the metallic microbes that create gold with sulfates that they require for respiration, and it is also anionic which the microbes seem to need in order to dissolve minerals into nano-sized particles, so that they can consume the attached hydrogen for energy. They then excrete the minerals as new exalted noble metals following the periodic table's order of nobility. Clue number two, a water that does not wet the hands. The answer to this clue is spirits or alcohol or other volatile solvents such as naphtha. These all have a transparent water-like consistency, yet evaporate so quickly in open air that they are unable to wet your hands for very long. Ethanol is a hydrocarbon that consists of a polar group and non-polar C2H5 group. When asking the question if it is possible that ethanol can be a molecular anion, and if yes, then how? And the correct answer is, yes, it is possible for ethanol to be anionic via deprotonation, in which is when a proton, which is positively charged hydrogen, is removed from the molecule. This process requires the use of a strong base such as hydroxide. This is clearly something the microbes can work with, and also what makes ethanol a very good solvent. 
When you pour ethanol on the dried matter from alchemical fermentation, you can easily extract the red sulfur oil this way. The ethanol is left to evaporate leaving behind the hydrocarbon oil of minerals that is so sought after in alchemy as the beginnings of the philosopher's stone itself. And finally, clue number three, a substance that is found commonly everywhere. The answer to this third and final clue is white vinegar. White vinegar is the most common substance of the three and can be found in almost every kitchen pantry. It is so ubiquitous that it is often overlooked as being one of the alchemical mercuries. Vinegar is made by tiny bacteria called acetobacter. They consume alcohol and convert it into acetic acid. Not only do these microbes, similar to other microbes such as yeast, create their own sulfites during their life cycle, but the acetic acid is also anionic. One thing that these three types of alchemical mercuries do have in common with each other besides potentially being all anionic is they also contain an abundance of available hydrogen for the metallic microbes to consume and use for energy. Thank you all so much for joining us today. It is hoped you have learned and appreciated something new today and that you will utilize this very secret information for your benefits in your great works. Please don't forget to like this video and please subscribe to see more videos soon.